Perhaps a year and a half ago, I was watching a show called Spycraft, and it was interesting overall. It was more about the art of spy, um, or you know, agencies and spying and all that. Their last episode was talking about cyber being used as a tool for um, espionage. And yes, it went through a lot of detail how they evolutioned from you know more. Uh, an analog to uh, people, it turned out into more network-based um, tapping on the phones and, and how cyber has grown into the uh, what we know now, becoming almost a, a tool the military can use uh, to disrupt um, or um, you know attack somebody. We've seen some of that as the components of some of the uh, warfare today includes cyber warfare as well. So in this Spycraft um, Netflix um, documentary, um, there was a, this guy called, uh, he was a retired CIA, James Gosler, and he was sharing very, very nonchalant um, this scary story I want to tell you about. Um, it's not necessarily a scary story. It's more of a scary situation. It could be possible. Uh, I'm going to call it is a low, um, a very low likelihood uh, this will happen, but high impact uh, to the point where this guy, um, Mr. James Gosler, call it uh, potentially catastrophic. So he obviously is being being asked a lot of these questions, like how, how, what's the worst he could get? And uh, using his own words, he says, "I use the words catastrophic and existential." Um, existential related to the loss of everything. Uh, when you say everything, think about your own life. You know, we have electricity, uh, it's usually stable. We have, you know, natural gas coming to our homes, usually to heat. Um, and think about water, you know, your local municipality or local private company providing you with water is, is pretty much something we take for granted. So he was saying, imagine that doesn't exist. And is due to a cyber event. Um, I'm quoting him here. The most people can survive, or families, let's put it this way. Um, it's perhaps a week or two. And uh, having to survive without the what we take for granted, water, like nat electricity, natural gas. Um, and, and how is that we are vulnerable in some ways to um, the attack to cyber, uh, cyber attack to cyber, um, sorry, the cyber attack to a critical infrastructure. Um, we have, uh, I mean, the government here considers critical infrastructure to a, a series of industries that without it, um, we would be in trouble. So this is a scary situation. Uh, this is something that, you know, usually, a topic is conversations in government and how to respond to something like that. But it's maybe something you ought to consider in your day to day. COVID, the last two years, have been perhaps a the closest thing you can get to a understanding of like what happens when, you know, I have to go and get my groceries through a um, order online pickup um, at the parking lot. Uh, what if that is not even available? You know, um, so. I guess the moral of this potential scenario is what are you doing to be prepared? You know, I'm not necessarily advocating for be, becoming a prepper, but just to think about those things. You know, the other day, a related story would be um, my family has a cell phone plan and it was acquired by another company and the transition, um, the billing, the billing, um, like a system did not catch up the charge to the credit card so they just discontinue service i couldn't get a hold of anybody they couldn't get a hold of anybody unless they you know they go to a wi-fi um, area where you can use other means of communication like email uh, to communicate so think about that you know if if we tomorrow wouldn't have a way to to be able to call each other um, how do we stay in touch with with people you know so maybe thinking about uh, those type of scenarios will help you to be prepared for when 
when there's a possibility like my family and I had the other day where we cannot call each other because our phone is turned off or the service is turned off.